Great to see you back here and today we're going to look at the handy trick that will help your models become more robust. Before we continue though, I wanted to quickly recap on what we did last time and what we did is we used the backward elimination method to construct a multiple linear regression using our data and through that method we constructed four separate models. You can see them on the in the background here, so model one, two, three and then four. And when we got to model four, we were only left with one independent variable uh, spent on research and development because all of the other ones were eliminated. And basically we completed the backward elimination process. However, we were left with kind of a feeling that maybe we shouldn't have excluded the last variable. And why is that? Well, first of all, we saw that this p-value is not that much bigger than uh, the significance level that we selected. We selected a significance level of 0 0.05. The p-value here is 0 0.06, so just a bit greater than um, the threshold. So that kind of leaves us with a feeling maybe we shouldn't have excluded that variable. The problem here is that this, uh, these methods, these stepwise uh, regression methods, they are very arbitrary. So once you select your significance level threshold, you got to stick to it, right? You, you, we selected 0 0.05, this one's 0 0.06, so that's greater and we just got to cut it off and not look, not look back anymore and just proceed with the method. So how can we improve our method of building models to assess situations like that and give, you know, like an extra opinion or uh, have another criteria to tell us whether or not we should have actually kept this uh, variable? And there is a way and we're going to talk about it right now. So let's look at this top part over here. The top part is responsible for the variable. So you have the coefficients and you've got the p-values and so on. So we've talked about it quite, quite extensively. But now let's look at the bottom part, the second part of um, our report. And here, as we discussed before, we've got the stats that are, are for the model as a whole. So how well it's been fitted, how well it's working, and, and so on. So the stats that we'll be looking at today are R squared and adjusted R squared. And they will help us come up with a cool approach or great approach uh, to improve our uh, backward elimination method. So we already talked about both the R squared and adjusted R squared in the section of this course. However, if you chose to skip that section because you're not interested in the formulas and so on, then I'll quickly recap for you now. So R squared over here is basically a characteristic or a parameter of your model, which tells you about the goodness of fit. So how well your model has been fitted. And R squared can never be greater than one and you want it to be as close to one as possible. The closer to one it is, the better your model uh, is deemed to be fitted. However, R squared is biased. And it's biased in a way that, it can, the way it's constructed and the way these models are run, so the ordinary least squared uh, method, it doesn't allow R squared to ever decrease. So the more variables you add to your model, the greater R squared will be. So basically what, what, we're, uh, what this means is that as long as you keep adding variables, R squared will always grow. And we can observe that here. So if we start from the end where we have only one variable, you can see that R squared is 0 0.94. Then R squared became, well, if, you, if we go this way, it's 0 0.95. Then it's 0 0.9507. So as you can see, the more variables we have, the greater R squared gets. And that's, that's always going to be the case just because of um, the way R squared is derived. And moreover, you can even include completely random variables. So if I throw into this model, I throw another variable, which is basically the temperature outside, like air temperature outside right now, then and I throw that in as an independent variable. Of course, it's not a predictor. It can't predict profit of a company that works in New York or California, but R squared is still gonna grow and is going to imply that our model is now even better fitted. So that way R squared is biased. And that's where adjusted R squared comes into play. Adjusted R squared is very similar to R squared. It's got uh, a very similar formula, but it actually has a, a penalization factor. So basically, just like R squared would grow if you add more variables, adjusted R squared would also grow, but there's a penalization factor which makes it smaller, which reduces adjusted R squared 
as you add more variables. So there's kind of these two effects battling each other. On one hand, it's growing because of the way it's constructed. On the other hand, the penalization factor is uh, penalizing you or penalizing the adjusted R squared and reducing it every time you add a variable. So basically, if the variable that you added doesn't uh, make adjusted R, doesn't make R squared grow that much, like for instance here you can see 0 0.9505 to 0 0.9507. So it only grew by a fraction, very, very small amount. Well, if that happens, then the penalization factor is going to overwhelm this growth and therefore the adjusted R squared is actually going to decrease in that scenario. And that way we can use and we will use the adjusted R squared to uh, watch the goodness of fit of our models and how it changes. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's observe the adjusted R squared in our method. What was the adjusted R squared here? It was 0 0.94. Then once we excluded administration expenses, adjusted R squared went from 0 0.945 to 0 0.9475. So as you can see here, adjusted R squared went up. We reduced, um, basically what that means is that the model is now better, it's, being, it's fitted better, it, it works, um, these variables in this combination fit uh, the profit variable, fit this model to explain the profit variable better than these variables in this combination to explain the profit variable, which is good, it's a good step. Okay, so that means we improved our model. Here adjusted R squared is 0 0.9475. Let's see what it happened to it when we move to the next step. And the next step, adjusted R squared is 0 0.9483. So it went up again, meaning that once again, we improved our model. So altogether, these variables are doing a better job explaining profit than these variables together are doing a job explaining profit. That's great. We improved our model again. And now let's see what happens when we take out the last variable, marketing spent. So we went from adjusted R squared, 0 0.9483, to adjusted R squared, 0 0.9454. And what does that tell us? R, adjusted R squared went down. It went down by from by 0 0.003 approximately. So that means that this model, this new model, is actually worse than this model. So this model was better fitted to predict or explain the variance in profit than this model is doing so. So there you go. So even though we excluded a variable according to our backward elimination method, this this variable shouldn't have been excluded because it was improved. It was um, with this with this variable, this model is actually working better. And that is your takeaway uh, handy trick: how to uh, observe your models and uh, how to create them. You don't only just follow the backward elimination or whatever method that you're using and um, arbitrarily follow the rules. Just instead, follow the rules, but also watch the adjusted R squared and see if it's actually improving. So if it's growing, then you're doing the right thing. As soon as you see the R adjusted R squared drop, then you have to stop and question, did I just do the right thing or not? And you know what, what, what is the trade-off of excluding a certain variable or, or the opposite of including the certain var variable? So adjusted R squared is kind of your indicator how you're going along the way. Uh, but that's uh, it for today. Hope you find this useful and hope you can apply, you'll find ways to apply this in your actual work. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, happy analyzing.